Hey girl, hey, it's Anita, and welcome to day three of our Proverbs Bible study. So I wanted to do um, today's Bible study a little differently. I did not want to hit y'all with 10 different one-minute videos in their broadcast channel. So I was like, let me just record a video, upload it to YouTube, and hope that this is better so you can just watch it or listen to it whenever you have a moment. <laughs> um, I just felt like this would be better. So y'all let me know if you prefer this or if you prefer the one-minute clips in on the broadcast channel so we're gonna go ahead and pray first and then we'll hop into studying chapter three um how i typically study the bible or what i find is easiest is to use the soap method s-o-a-p that stands for scripture observation application and prayer um but i always open with prayer because i from what I've been taught is that you want to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. The Holy Spirit is our helper. If you're a believer, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit at that point dwells within you. And the Holy Spirit is who helps us to understand and interpret the scripture. That's how God speaks to us. So I always open with prayer and I ask the Holy, the Holy Spirit to open my, my spiritual eyes to understand whatever the Lord wants to say or to speak to me or to get to me through his word. So we're going to do that first. Father God, we thank you so much for this time um, to study your word, to get to know you better, and to hear what you have to say. Um, Holy Spirit, I thank you for opening the eyes of my spiritual understanding to receive and understand um, what you want to say to me through your word today. I thank you for being the helper, and I thank you for being the teacher um, with today's Proverbs. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get to it. So, like I said, so first is S, scripture. So, we're going to go ahead and read the chapter. All right, so I am reading from the Christian Christian Standard Version. That's the translation I'm reading, so it may be a little different from whatever you're doing. Um, all right, so it says, My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands, for they will bring you many days a full life and well-being. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on a tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard with God and people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, know him and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Happy is a man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and her revenue is better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire can equal her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant and all her paths peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her and those who hold on to her are happy. The Lord founded the earth by wisdom and established the heavens by understanding. By his knowledge and watery depths, by his knowledge, the watery depths broke open and the clouds dripped with dew. Can I talk today? Maintain sound wisdom and discretion. My son, don't lose sight of them. They will be life for you and adornment for your neck. Then you will go safely on your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. You will lie down and your sleep will be pleasant. Don't fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. When it is in your power, don't withhold good from the one to... When it is in your power, don't withhold good from the one to whom it belongs. Don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later. I'll give it tomorrow when it is there with you. Don't plan any harm against your neighbor, for he trusts you and lives near you. Don't accuse anyone without cause. When he has done you no harm, don't envy a violent man or choose any of his ways, for the devious are detestable to the Lord, but he is a friend to the upright. The Lord's curse is on the household of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks those who mock, but gives grace to the humble. The wise will inherit honor, but he holds up fools to dishonor. So that is the full chapter. That is the S for scripture and soap. Next, we go to O, which is observation. So typically, as I'm reading, which I already read this this morning, but typically as I'm reading, I will go through and highlight or underline passages that stick out to me. 
Um, so that's what I did already. You do see that I have some notes in the side. So as I'm reading, I'm observing at the same time. I'll highlight, I'll underline, I'll add notes. If I have questions about something, I'll stop and say, well, God, what do you mean by this? Um, I may look up words if I don't know what the word means, all of that kind of stuff. So there's observation. I'm not doing that like in real time because I don't want this to be too long. Um, but I'm going to go through what I observed. So the first one, verse three and four, it says, never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck, write them on the tablet. Actually, let me go back. If you don't know, if you've never read Proverbs, if you've never dug deep into the scripture, um, Proverbs was written by King Solomon. King Solomon is known in the Bible as his wife, the wisest man to ever live. And it's written King Solomon is talking to his sons, right? So that means he is giving wisdom to his sons from the perspective that they will one day be kings. Or I believe, well, he had a lot of kids. He had 700 wives. That's another thing to know. He refers to wisdom a lot as a woman, and he refers to a lot of other things as a woman. And now that I've read Solomon's story, I realize why, because he had a lot of issues with women. I mean, he had 700 wives <laughs> and 300 concubines. So he refers to a lot of things as women, as a woman, um, like wisdom. He refers to wisdom as a woman. And a lot of times he referred to like treacherous ways and stuff as a woman. And when I first used to read it, I was like, this is very misogynistic. It kind of is because we have to think about the person who wrote it. It was Solomon. He had seven hundred wives. So there's that. Um, just to give that back background, it's like when I know the context of a story that helps me to read it kind of in the right light, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to share that with y'all in case you didn't know, or you know, hope hopefully it will help you because it helped me. Um, but anyway, so it says Verse three and four, my first observation, never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard with God and people. So my first question was, well, God, when I read loyalty and faithfulness, is that saying that I should be loyal and faithful to everybody? Because it says we will, because of that, we will find favor with God and people. I'm like, or is it that you will give us faithful? favor with people if we are loyal and faithful to you okay so i did have to go read a little commentary i wanted to know the hebrew underlying meaning of some of these words and um in the king james version it doesn't say loyalty and faithfulness it uses another word that i didn't write down but the original word that it used is uh the hebrew word is chest which says um it is a faithful bond based on covenant and the covenant that we have is a formal agreement between God and his people, right? So I'm like, okay, so that means that if I honor my covenant with God, if we obey him, which is what wisdom is, wisdom is being, um, is obeying God and what he, um, what he instructs us to do. Um, so if we do that, if we're loyal and faithful to our covenant with God, then he will give us faith, favor with God, but also God commands us to love our neighbor and and treat people the way that we want to be treated for lack of better words and when we're honoring god and if we're doing what he commands us to do then that will overflow to how we treat people now does that mean that we're going to be loyal and faithful to people that don't i don't want to say don't deserve it but does that mean that you're subjected to let somebody treat you bad and stay in bad situations no because when i originally read it i was kind of like well do that mean i just got to take anything no you do not that's not wisdom <laughs> This book is about wisdom. Wisdom is not saying to stay in situations or continue relationships, friendships, etc. that will people treat you bad. Yes, we're, we're supposed to forgive them. And yes, you know, um, we're not supposed to hold bitterness in our hearts towards them. But that does not mean wisdom does not tell you to stay in bad situations. That's not what wisdom tells you to do. So that's something that I had to kind of ask the Lord about. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if that resonated with y'all because I had questions. All right. So <laughs> now we get down to verse five and six, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding and all your ways know him and he will make your path straight. That is one of my personal favorite uh, scriptures. And if you saw in the broadcast channel, I kind of talked about how recently God made me put my faith to the test. He told me to do some things, specifically in my business. Um, I had to go back and turn down a brand deal that I previously said yes to because God told me to say no and I didn't want to say no. And when he disciplined me pretty much for being disobedient, I was like, 
okay, well, you know, next time. And he said, no, go back and say no. What? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. But I did it. And um, right after that, um, I had another opportunity and I prayed about it. And I felt like he gave me a yes. But he said, you know, you need to charge your rate. They were offering something below what I would normally pay, uh, charge. And this is a brand that I've been wanting to work with for a very long time. So I did not want to turn it down. I was like, I want to accept it in hopes that we can create a working relationship. God said, no, you're going to turn it down because they need to pay you X, Y, and Z. I was like, man, you know, so I did it. <laughs> um, and I, I literally cried about it. I was like, God, you want me to be poor? You want me to be broke? You going to have me not accepting any brand deals? And um, long story short, I turned it down and they was like, okay, well, what would you accept for this campaign? And I told, I actually was about to type out an amount and God told me to type another amount, which was more. And I was like, really, Lord? So I said, all right. So I typed it out and went on about my business. And y'all, by the end of the day, they came back and accepted the offer. And God was showing me that I know your worth even more than you do. Like when you trust in the Lord and do not rely on your own understanding, if you use your understanding, you would have accepted less than what I had for you. And I was just like, okay. And little things like that where I can see the immediate return on my obedience with him helps me to trust him even more. It helps me to remember that he is God, omnipresent, omnipotent. He knows everything, everything. So why would I not trust whatever he tells me to do? So just wanted to share that if you ever struggled with, um, with, it's one thing to believe the scripture because that's something I've always, oh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. But when it came down to the wire of me having to trust him, when it was a situation where I felt like I knew what was best, yeah, I, had, I needed to see that. Um, okay, so also verse nine stuck out to me. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Now, I recently studied tithing for my own self just because... Um, I grew up, I was taught to tithe and I have been tithing, but I realized recently the Lord showed me that I hadn't studied for my own self to have my own personal understanding of what the scripture says about it. So I do believe um, in tithing even now. Some people believe that it was just Old Testament. I don't believe that. So my perspective on this will come from the fact that I currently believe that we are supposed to tithe. Um, so when I read this, honor the Lord with your possessions with the first produce of your entire harvest. Now, again, this is written at a time where that's how they um, pay tithes in a sense with their harvest, with the fruit of their land. Um, and so my note that I put to the side was that God doesn't need my money. God don't need money. Um, it's about a heart posture. Um, does money have my heart? Or does God have it? Do I trust him to really provide? So that's kind of, that's what I gathered from that scripture. Um, verse 12 stuck out to me as well, for it says, For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Um, and when I think about that, I think about myself as a mother. You know, I discipline my child and it's hard. I don't want to discipline her. I don't want to give her consequences, but I have to so that she can learn, Right. God disciplines those he loves and it helps to look at the discipline that he gives me in the right perspective. He loves me. This is for my good, right? Like, you know, just to have a different perspective when God does discipline me or when he does correct me. Just like I was telling y'all earlier when I was disobedient and I didn't listen to him with a specific instruction. Yeah, he was like, he was on my head. I said what I said. You didn't listen. Go back. <laughs> Go back and say no. Go back. Um, cause he said what he said. So there's that, um, that's, that's, that just helps me to remember in times where I feel like, dang God, you really on my head. I discipline those I love. I love you. Um, okay. What else? Verse 19, um, it says the Lord founded the earth by wisdom and established the heavens by understanding by his knowledge, the watery depths broke open and the clouds dripped with dew. Um, I honestly don't remember why. <laughs> why I highlighted this I don't know but I will say it's just like I think remembering that the Lord is wisdom like he had wisdom even at the conception of the earth it's again it's it's for me it was more so of a reminder of his the fact that he's all-knowing you know what I'm saying so 
Um, verse 25, do not fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. So the first thing that stuck out to me, it said, do not fear sudden danger or the ruin of the wicked when it comes to me. That's a promise. That mean if you're wicked, if you're doing things you're not supposed to do, if you have ill intent, all of that, it's going to come. The ruin is going to come. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. It said when it comes. It don't say if. It says when. So I was like, ooh, you know, that's a promise, <laughs> a warning. Um, it says, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. So I love I love highlighting and circling promises of God because I feel like it gives me a sure something to stand on and to believe in and to pray and to just have that confidence that, Lord, you see that um, I don't have to fear sudden danger if I maintain the wisdom and discretion that you've given me. And I'm getting that from like right before that verse 21, it says maintain sound wisdom and discretion. And then it goes down and it says here, you don't have to fear sudden danger or ruin the of the wicked when it comes for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from a snare. That happens when you maintain sound wisdom and discretion. So again, another promise that I love to have in my arsenal. Um, and the last thing that I highlighted, or this is a question that I had to ask God about, um, where it says, verse 27 says, when it is in your power, don't withhold good from the one whom it belongs. Don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later. I'll give it tomorrow when it's there with you. And I was like, okay, so does this mean anytime somebody asks me for something, I'm supposed to give it, <laughs> you know, like, wait, and the first scripture that I thought about was the commandment to love, love thy neighbor. You know, and I think that was, came from like, you know, the 10 commandments that Moses had. But also there's another scripture that talks about loving your neighbor as yourself. So I'm like, okay. Also, I have to keep in, keep in perspective that again, King Solomon is talking to his sons. And I'm sure as a king, there are so many people that come needing things. And I'm sure he's telling him like, hey, don't be stingy. Don't be selfish. Like you have to steward this kingship. Well, you still have to take care of your people. Now, how does that relate to us currently present day? Because, you know, we're not necessarily kings and queens, um, but we do have family, friends. I mean, there are different charities. There are things going on in the world. And it's like, so am I supposed to donate to every charity? Am I supposed to do all of that? Well, the first thing I do believe, again, this book is about wisdom. So I have been taught to steward everything well. So when someone asks me for something, I haven't always done this. God has literally been teaching me like literally within the last month, honestly, to steward my money and my time and all of that well. When someone asks me for something, no, before I give anything, no matter if I want to or not, I always ask God, okay, Lord, if you want me to do this, you want me to donate here? Do you want me to give here? At the end of the day, number one, Everything I have comes from God, including the money. I'm stewarding the money that he's given me. That's my perspective. And number two, again, God being all-knowing, omnipresent, omnipotent, all of that, he knows whatever that other person has going on. Or he knows if this charity has good intentions and good wills. I mean, we all see so many organizations and nonprofits and all of these things that be corrupt with money on the back end. Well, I can't control that. You have to answer to God about that. All I can do is control if God told me to give in this situation or not. So, um, so I do personally, you know, believe in, you know, wisdom and discretion, even with that. Now, again, the scripture says, don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later. I'll give it tomorrow when it is there with you. So that's what made me say, well, God, does that mean anytime somebody come ask? And he said, well, first of all, it says, don't say to your neighbor. Everybody's not your neighbor. And I'm like, okay, well, what what would con what would constitute someone as a neighbor in present day? And what I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying was, what would constitute someone as a neighbor is a fellow Christ a fellow believer, a fellow Christian. Well, I don't even want to say Christian. I want to say a fellow believer, someone who believes that Jesus died on a cross for their sins and they confess him as Lord and Savior over their lives. Um, and you may say, well, how do you know that? Well, that's where wisdom comes in. So that's where at the end we come back to saying, God, Lord, is this something that you want me to donate to? Do you want me to give them this money? And even then I've had times personally where God will tell me no. And they're believers. They're anything. And I'm like, okay, it may be something he's trying to do in their life. I don't know. But I say all of that to say. <laughs> <laughs> that is something that I had to ask God, like, okay, so what ex what what are we saying here? What what how should I go about this? Does this mean I just give to any any and everybody 
And from what the Holy Spirit told me, no, um, it's more so your heart and your intention. It's not that I don't want to give. It's just that I'm submitting my decision to give to the Lord. Number one, is this my neighbor? And number two, even with my neighbors, I still say, okay, God, are you cool with this? You good with this? Okay, yeah. Or no. Um, yeah, those were all of my takeaways. That's the observation in SOAP. So scripture, observation, application. And so the application portion is just where you would say, okay, well, out of the scriptures that I observe, how would I apply this in my life? But I feel like I personally do observation and application at the same time um because i was telling you guys how certain scriptures kind of stuck out to me or how um currently things that i've been going through or the way god has been dealing with me the scriptures relate especially the trust in the lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding because i be wanting to lean on my <laughs> own understanding because a lot of times i just can't always see what god, we don't see what god sees so it's hard because we don't understand what he's doing or what he sees we don't know what he know and we just have to trust that he knows what's best even when we don't see it and we don't know so that was kind of like a huge current application for me um and yeah and just i think um what else yeah, that was kind of the, the biggest one for me. So, um, and then P, we're going to end with prayer. Well, God, we thank you so much for this time of fellowship, even virtually, God. I thank you so much um, that everyone listening to this will grab, some, grab something um, from your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is the helper and the teacher that is working as we read your word, as we listen to your word, as we meditate on your word. And Father God, we thank you that we won't just be hearers, but doers of your word. So God, I thank you for giving us practical application, even later on through this day, as we listen to it later, bring us back into remembrance of what your word says when we need it in the times you know just as we're going through our day father god we thank you so much for your word and for speaking to us through your word and for bring continuing to bring us into the knowledge of who you are in jesus name amen all right i hope you found that helpful and i'll see y'all tomorrow